Do you struggle to get good, restful sleep? Your body needs that from you because sleep is one of the most restorative and recharging things for our brains and for our body. And it wants you to get better sleep. So stick around because I'm going to show you how. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Allison, and we are talking all things sleep today, which is why I'm shooting from my bedroom and in my PJs. Sleep is so important. It is one of the most important things for your health, yet you're probably not getting the best, most restful sleep. So today I'm here sharing the 10 scientifically backed strategies to help you snooze and sleep a little bit better. Here we go. Number one, protect your bed. A bed is for two things, sleeping and sex, and that's it. Anything else and your brain gets confused about what it's supposed to be doing when it's here. So that's it. Protect your bed, sleep and sex only. Number two, stay consistent with bedtimes and wake times. Our bodies are trainable and they learn even when you don't realize it. So help your body get consistent and predict that it's time for bed by going to bed around the same time every single night and waking up at the same time every single morning. I encourage you to be as consistent as possible with this on the weekends. You can flex a little bit, but don't be binging on sleep waking up at noon on a Saturday. Not good for your body or for your sleep. Number three, have a bedtime routine. I have talked about this before, but again, this starts to send all these signals to your body that it is time to wind down and prepare for sleep. If you want more info on a bedtime routine, why it's important and what you can do as a part of that, then you can go ahead and check out this link later because I talk all about it. Number four, create a worry window or a to-do list activity. Lots of the reason that you might have trouble sleeping, right, is that you get into bed and then your brain starts worrying and spinning with all the things you have to do tomorrow. So create a designated time before sleep where you schedule in some worry time. So maybe this is you write in a little notebook or on your phone, quick things that you're worrying about almost as a way to dump them from your brain to a list. There's also a newer way that you can do this, and that is to kind of, instead of necessarily doing a worry window, that you kind of create a to-do time. So before you go to bed, you've thought about all the things that you have to do tomorrow. Write them down, get them out of your brain and onto a list. And then when your brain in the middle of the night or right when you're falling asleep says, hello, you forgot this, you can remind your brain, I already had my worry time, it's already on my to-do list, you don't need to remind me, it's time for sleep. Number five, oof, I'm not going to be your friend with this one, beware of naps. Naps can feel so good, especially if you haven't slept great the, the night before or you're really exhausted. Naps are tempting, but they totally throw off your sleep cycle. So avoid naps. If you've got to take a nap, try to keep it under 30 minutes or less and not within six hours of bedtime. Number six, I'm going to make some enemies with this one. Get screens out of the bedroom. You do not need a TV in your bedroom. And in fact, it is messing with your sleep. Remember that one about protecting your bedroom? Bed ain't for movies and Netflixing. And if you say, but I can't fall asleep without a TV, which is what I hear from clients a lot, you know, at some point you couldn't tie your shoe either but you learned. So if you think I need a TV to fall asleep, I'm really gonna encourage you, please break that habit. Don't just turn it off, get it out of your bedroom. You can substitute that activity with something like sleep stories, um, which lots of meditation apps have. You can listen to a podcast and set it to auto turn off at a certain time. Retrain your brain, get out of the habit of needing a screen. Number seven, avoid stimulants, caffeine and nicotine before bed. Y'all, those are literally waking your brain up at a physiological level. So it's like it's dooming you for sleep. Avoid those. If you have a mid-afternoon slump and you're tempted to reach for coffee, try something else this week instead. Get up, walk, move, take a mindful breath, do a quick meditation, do some jumping jacks. Try something else besides the caffeine because it will come back later to bite you. Number eight. 
exercise. It's so annoying that just about every single health healthcare provider talks about the value of exercise and it being helpful. But it's true with sleep. Exercise and getting moving, even if it's just for 10 minutes a day, is one of the most helpful things you can do to regulate your sleep. I know we don't want to hear that, but it's true. So get moving if you want to sleep better. Number nine, watch the booze, especially before bedtime. Maybe you think that that glass of wine or the couple of beers before bed helps you sleep better. And it's a little bit of a trick because here's the thing. Sometimes alcohol can help you fall asleep better, but it does not help you stay asleep. Usually later in the night when your body starts to process that alcohol, it wakes your body up, meaning you're not getting super restful sleep. So lay off the alcohol before bedtime, especially if you want to sleep better. And the last one, number 10, is if you can't sleep after 20 minutes, get up and go do something else. Any longer than that and your brain just starts to stress out about not being able to sleep. So if you've been in bed trying to sleep for 20 minutes and it's not happening, get up and go do something non-stimulating, meaning read a book, knit, fold laundry, something that doesn't activate your brain but engages it enough that you're not focusing on the fact that you can't sleep. Sleep is a science, but here's the thing, it's not rocket science. It is not that difficult. These 10 strategies, when you are consistent with them, can really help you get better, higher quality sleep, which means that your body and your brain are functioning at a higher level. Don't pick and choose from this list, right? If there's things on this list that you're not doing, take today as an opportunity to start changing them and commit to better sleep. Let me know which tip or tips you are going to focus on this week. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear. They're not always fun, but they make a big difference. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you want more good stuff like this in Simplified Psychology, you can check out my site, DrAllisonAnswers.com. And of course, you can find me just about all across social media. So I'm off to catch some Z's, and I hope you can do the same this week. Take care.